In this lesson, we'll discuss electron configurations and magnetic properties for ions. The question reads, write the electron configuration and orbital diagram for each ion and determine whether the ion is diamagnetic or paramagnetic. Let's start with question A. We have aluminum 3 plus. The 3 plus tells us that aluminum has lost three electrons. So going back to what we learned in previous videos, we learned about Hunze's rule, which tells us that every orbital in a sublevel is singly occupied before any orbital is doubly occupied. That'll make more sense when we create our orbital diagrams. And we also learned about the diagonal rule, which is a guideline explaining the order in which the electrons fill the orbital levels. You will also need a periodic table, and since aluminum is found right here, the noble gas that precedes aluminum is neon, so I'm not going to write the whole electron configuration of aluminum, that'll take too long. I'll write down neon and then the rest. So I have neon, and because aluminum is found in the P block, this is referred to as the P block, S, D, and F, it has an S orbital, and since it's in the third row, we write down 3s2. So let's go ahead and do that. 3s2. According to the diagonal rule, after 3s comes 3p. 3p1. And the reason why I'm at 1 is because it's, it's right at the beginning of the p block. Going back to our electron configuration, this can be written as ne for our orbital diagram. The s orbital gets one box and it has two electrons, one, two. Then we have the p orbital, this can hold up to six, so we'll draw three boxes. And it has one electron, so one spinning up. So these three electrons disappear because of the ionic charge, leaving us with only the electron configuration for neon. You can write it as just neon like this, or you can write it as the preceding noble gas, helium. Therefore, we'll have helium and three electrons removed from aluminum makes us having to write the electron configuration for neon. So we have 2s2, the two electrons here, 2s2, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. After s comes 2p, 6. So either of these will work when it comes to writing the electron configuration or orbital diagram for aluminum 3 plus. Now we also have to determine whether it's diamagnetic or paramagnetic and because there are no unpaired electrons it's diamagnetic. So if you were to take a look at the following had we removed all three of these electrons you wouldn't have anything that's unpaired therefore this is diamagnetic. Let's do B. For B we have sulfur and it has a charge of 2 minus. This means that it has gained 2 electrons. Sulfur is found right here and so technically we are creating a electron configuration for argon. Let's go ahead and do our work up here so we don't have to scroll back and forth. The preceding noble gas is once again neon. So I'll write down neon and it's in the third row so I'll write down 3s2 and Sulfur normally would be, after 3s2, 3p4. But because it has gained two electrons, this 4 will become a 6. And the orbital diagram will look like this. The orbital diagram for neon, and then a box for this orbital, three boxes for this orbital, spinning up, up, and up, down, down, and down. Because there are no unpaired electrons, this is also diamagnetic. In question C, we have to do the same thing for iron 3 plus. Iron is found right here in the D block, and because it has a 3 plus charge, that means it has lost three electrons. So technically, we're making one for vanadium, but of course, in reference to iron. The preceding noble gas is argon. So the electron configuration for argon, and then 4s2, and Normally iron without the ionic form would be 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now since iron has lost three electrons and it's a transition metal, we remove the electrons from 4s orbital before removing electrons from the 3d orbital. So creating the orbital diagram, we have AR, this is represented by one box, and it would have 
one spinning up, one spinning down, and this would be represented by five boxes, where this is spinning up, 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 and up, and one down. You would remove the electrons from this box first before removing them from here. So this one will be empty, and the one here simply becomes one spinning up. And because there are unpaired electrons, notice that these are all unpaired, this is paramagnetic, and we rewrite this as 4s0 and 3d5. And there you have it. Three examples on how to write electron configurations. If you want the answers to questions D, E, and F, make sure you watch part two of this series. We'll see you soon.